Call meeting order at 5.15 p.m. Oh, what? Let me know. Okay, Chairman. You ready? Yes, sir. Okay, welcome all for uh, the meeting of Wednesday, October 28, 2020. I uh, will call the meeting to order at 5.15. Uh, would you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, thank you for attending. Mr. Zinnerlo, would you please uh, <coughs> take a roll call? Certainly. Mr. Kastein. Present. Mr. Conroy. Here. Mr. Hall. Here. Mr. Henry. Here. Mr. McGill. Here. Mr. Perrier. Here. Mr. Potaker. Here. Mr. Rosenquist. Here. Mr. Timmons. Here. And Ms. Walter. Here. All, the, all legislators have received a copy of the stenographer's minutes of the October 14, 2020 regular session. Uh, if there are no additions, deletions, or corrections, I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes as moved. Move. I have a motion by Legislator Rosenquist. I have a second by Legislator McGill. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. I will now recognize those in the audience who wish to share their thoughts and concerns with the legislature. Uh, please raise your hand if you wish to be recognized, state your name uh, and address for the record. In accordance with the rules of order, all speakers will be limited to five minutes. Is there anyone here that I don't see that wishes to address the legislature? No one. Uh, we will now go to committee reports. Each legislator chairs one of the 10 standing committees and I will call on the chairperson of each committee in alphabetical order by committee, starting with Buildings and Grounds and Mr. Perrier. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Building and Grounds Committee meeting scheduled for Thursday, October 8th was canceled. The committee was polled on resolution 635 and 636 on today's agenda. The next meeting for the Building and Grounds Committee is tentatively scheduled for Monday, November 9th at 4.30 p.m. End of report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Children and Family Services, Legislator Potiphar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Family and Children's Services Committee uh, has not met since the last regular session. The next meeting is tentatively scheduled for Thursday, November 5th at 5.15 p.m. End of report. Thank you. Economic Development and County Operations, Legislator Rosenquist. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, the Economic Development and County Operations Committee meeting was scheduled uh, for Tuesday, October 13th. That meeting was canceled. I did reach out to several uh, department heads regarding uh, status of projects. Uh, David Randall responded back with his um, uh, Wi-Fi uh, project that we talked early on in this year about providing public access uh, to our Wi-Fi. He's actively working on that. Uh, <coughs> several county buildings and the next phase is to open up the, open that up to public access. I spoke with Martin Gagno regarding uh, the, uh, the uh, assessment service contracts. Uh, she said all but two, I believe. Uh, all, uh, all two are back and executed, two are verbal yeses waiting for the executed contract. So there we go. Um, I had a conversation with uh, Legislator Waldron the other day for regarding uh, contracts for uh, board election services as well. Uh, I'm, I, believe that you reached out to uh, Chairperson Henry regarding that, and we'll, we'll hear back from that. Yes, in fact, did Legislator Walter get a hold of you? Yes, yeah, yeah, we, we spoke, oh, okay. yeah, we spoke, so All right. I just wanted right. to put that Excellent. out there as well. Um, the <coughs> Economic Development and County Operations Committee meeting is tentatively scheduled for Thursday, November 12th at 5 p.m. and report. Thank you very much. Finance, Legislator Timmons. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the Finance Committee meeting scheduled for Wednesday, October 7th was canceled. The committee was pulled on resolution 637 through 640 that are on tonight's agenda. The next meeting is tentatively scheduled for Wednesday, November 4th at 6.15 p.m. However, we're actually looking to see if uh, Simon's meeting earlier uh, before this one, if we could switch them both an hour earlier. So instead of 6.15 for finance, it would be 5.15. Okay. Uh, so if I, is everybody okay with that? I can make those changes, but I, I don't want to do it if it doesn't 
Yeah, everyone, your schedules. everyone on the community service committee is okay with that. Two, four, fifteen. So good. Excuse me. Good question. <coughs> Finance be at five fifteen then. That's what we're asking. Okay. Okay. Sorry, what day is that again? That is the November fourth. You might be a tad tired that day. So. Me? Why? Why do we? You're going to send a reminder out that, right? Yes, I just didn't want to do it if it was not something that was amenable to the board. Okay. So I'm sorry, we would move that to 515? So, yes. so Simon's four. committee would move to 415 and finance would then move to 515. Okay, thank you. End of report. Okay, hey, let's send Can we go and get rid of that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, health, Legislator Walter. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the Health Committee has not met since our last regular session. Um, of course, we have Mr. Canoza here tonight um, to provide the legislature an update. And our next Health Committee is going to be tentatively scheduled for Thursday, November 5th at 4.30 p.m. Thank you, John. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Mark. Uh, just provide an updated cases and uh, some uh, new items uh, for your information. Um, our cases as of today, um, I'm pretty happy to say yesterday we had no uh, additional cases, which was a good thing. It was a, a little bit of a respite. Today we have three new lab confirmed positive cases. One SUNY student, one college student from another town that came home, and one general member of the community. Um, so that's what we expect to see this time of year. People are inside, they're not outside as much as they are in the summer where we were having zeros, ones, and twos every day. So. Um, at this point, we also have 200 lab confirmed positive cases recovered. We're starting to see that cluster that we did have last week. Last week was the week from hell. We had uh, uh, two specific clusters being SUNY Plattsburgh and also Clinton Correctional Facility. They had uh, 14. Uh, SUNY Plattsburgh had 28, if not 29. I think a new case just came out from today. So um, they are finally, uh, we are seeing recoveries from a lot of those. So. Um, in the last week, we had uh, a total of, from Monday through Saturday of 42 new positive cases. That was an all-new uh, record for us. It's not a record I like to break again. So, um, but uh, just to give you a feeling, usually during the week we see anywhere between 14 and 16 new cases for the whole week. So this was three times that. It was a big, big spike. So uh, most of the uh, uh, cluster from SUNY Plattsburgh came from off-campus students. SUNY has a harder time definitely uh, wrapping their arms around that, obviously because they're off-campus. They're not under the, necessarily the strict jurisdiction of campus. <coughs> so uh, Clinton, uh, Clinton Correctional Facility, uh, they're already starting to see some of their 14 cases recovering as we speak. Um, because of this big spike that we had, uh, we, were, we needed to ramp up our isolation and quarantine contact tracing. Uh, capabilities. Uh, we were caught a little short-sighted by this. Nobody expected a three-fold uh, spike increase in one week. So we have, uh, we're reaching out to all of our partners to provide assistance, including the sheriff. The sheriff, uh, the isolation quarantine contract tracing work is cop work. They can do it. They're very good at it. The sheriff is providing assistance to us uh, by uh, taking care of all of the isolation quarantine contact tracing for Clinton Correctional Facility. Um, we're also adding a couple staff uh, from within our department, switching them, reassigning them over to healthcare services, our isolation and quarantine team. Um, and we're also looking at working with SUNY, most likely uh, the second semester next year, um, uh, to have their uh, SUNY police, who are contact tracing trained, help us with isolation and quarantine for their students. So this will be a big help for us. So we're looking at multiple areas of improvement to help us get through these big spikes. Other than that, we're, we're doing quite well. So, uh, Supplemental testing at the, at the uh, county building at 213 Connecticut Road is going very well. That's operated by CUPH. They're continuing with anywhere between 30 to 80 tests per day, typically weekends are the lighter days. Uh, SUNY Plattsburgh completed uh, just last week, Tuesday and Wednesday, 2,000 <coughs> pool tests. And if you know anything about these pool tests, they do have the capability <coughs> for every uh, pool of 12 students worth of saliva, they have the ability to go back and uh, test each of the aliquots from that 12 uh, from those 12 separate people's pool tests. So 
it works very well for SUNY Plattsburgh, and they've been able to identify positive students quite well from it in the recent past. So they were running a pretty good record there for quite some time <coughs> uh, of no positive uh, pools. Uh, they're currently, as you know, uh, SUNY Plattsburgh is currently working to provide departure testing for all of their students at least 10 days prior to them leaving Plattsburgh, so they're not bringing anything home with them and spreading it to other areas of the state. Um, and when they do come back, that is the end of the semester. They will be, uh, like my son at SUNY Canton, they will be online for the balance of the semester to finish up in December, but when they come back on February 2nd, give or take, they will be tested again before they come here, or when, as soon as they arrive or before they come here. Uh, SUNY President Yeti, uh, he's, I, I uh, enjoy working with him. He's holding the strong position and he personally walks the neighborhoods around SUNY Plattsburgh on a regular basis every week to make sure there's no parties going on. Uh, in other words, as he calls it, chumming the water for COVID uh, expansion. So he's, he's a good egg and I enjoy working with him very much. So um, according to the New York State website, uh, if you look at all the math, testing in Clinton County has increased quite substantially in the last two to three months. Uh, you may recall we were required to hold uh, an, a daily testing number of 100 people, 100 tests per day, um, as, par as part of our, our original quota, to meet the quota of the state of New York's requirements. We're now between slower days, 150, up to 500 tests per day. Typically, they're going three to 500 most of the days of the week. So, and that's CVPH, Hudson Headwaters, well now. They're all combining to give us some really good numbers of testing. With more testing, always mind you, you're gonna have a few more positives than you had before when you were on the lighter side of the testing. So, um, anything else, Mike, I'm forgetting that you wanted to mention? I, I, I just, this is the first time in my 19 year career that aliquot will be in the minutes. Aliquot, aliquot, a subsample of a larger sample. There you go, <coughs> that's chemistry, buddy, that's chemistry. Yes, sir. Yes. There's something, uh, I saw on the, on the news, <coughs> sampling, sewer sampling. Yes, yes. Is that, is that something that could that be That is here? just very good. I'm glad you mentioned that. That has just started. We're looking at working working with the city. The city, it's the city's project. I give them full credit, uh, full uh, uh, thanks and appreciation for them going in this direction. They are working very closely with the New York City Department of Environmental Protection. Um, John Ross specifically from, the, uh, uh, from City Hall is working with them, he's their environmental engineer, and they, they just started that testing, and it is showing some promise. And I can tell you that uh, our colleagues, our peers at uh, CUPH, Dr. Ritima, and um, President Ignetti from SUNY Plattsburgh, a former ep epidemiology major, um, they're all interested in this. So it remains to be seen what we're gonna find out. The goal is to move from just the sewer plant, where the samples are being taken now at the end works, and move upstream and see if we can test parts of the city um, in the different zones to find out where it might be hot, might not be. The only problem with the data is that there's a lag in the reporting time, as you can understand. So what you're reading from that data is a week old, maybe two weeks old, you know what I mean? What good does it do you? But it can help tell when you're starting to improve and rates start going down in the wastewater. That's a definite. Yeah, so, I would think that dormitories would be an easy Absolutely. Test. Manholes, get the manholes. That's, that's, I, I, I miss this type of work, I really do. That's what I used to do in the old days. So. Yeah, yeah have, uh, just to add, St. Mark's University um, is doing that, based about manholes. They tested at St. Mark's, they narrowed it down, <coughs> this is just like last week, they narrowed it down to a building. So I assume they're doing the sub sets. They narrowed it down to a building until it's COVID there. And I think they found, I'm going to get the numbers wrong, 17 or 18 or more, more. Um, yeah, yeah. This one, which, which, which in theory, probably a lot of those kids were asymptomatic. Yeah, yes. yeah. In theory, uh, they would have been in and about campus. So immediately that group was tested and then put into quarantine. That's right. Because a spread in a congregate living facility, senior housing, or a dormitory takes time. It's going to spread. It's going to start with one or two people and work out. So you've got that time with the data, but again, you're seeing what, what, what happened by the sample a week and a half ago, but it's gonna tell you something if it's ramping up or ramping down. So sure. it is a useful, very useful tool if you know how to work it right. So, but the city's just starting to get full credit to the city for doing that, so. Legislator Hall. Uh, John, uh, what, you, what you can tell us and what you can't. Uh, 
person you said in the community had came down with it. Is that person in the hospital? And are we having good tracing on that person? Very good tracing. I will say one thing for our ladies, and in public health, uh, the word speed is not used often, but boy, does speed come in awful handy when you're doing ice <coughs> contact tracing, isolation, quarantine. Basically what you're doing is you're jumping on the, uh, the bad person and you're wrestling right to the ground and you're finding out where the problem is. You know what I mean? Speed. That, that was figuratively. <laughs> The need for speed is critical. Uh, as soon as we find out, when Monday night I was at Board of Health meeting, and that evening I had five nurses working hard into the evening here after hours till just about the time we left Mark from the Board of Health meeting, working all that time because that was the, the pinnacle of when we found out about this cluster. So if they had to do it that night, 12 hours of time, you're wasting time can't waste time. You've got to pin down the contacts, the contact tracing. You've got to do it and identify who needs to go in quarantine. That's the speed thing is critical. Oh, sorry, I don't know if I answered your whole question. Well, I think, I think the, the one question is, and I was just trying to find an email here, but um, uh, on uh, CVPH hospitalizations right now. Very good, very good. Yes, we are, we are, we are in very good shape with that. There are two positive cases at Clint, uh, CVPH, uh, one is a Clinton County resident. Don't forget, we also have uh, Essex County residents there too. So, um, as I understand, uh, no COVID patients on vents, another key statistic, which means they're in more serious condition. Um, we're doing well, we're doing the hospital. Believe me, when that spike occurred, I got phone calls from Dr. Reed and uh, Dr. Collins, too sweet, and they were, Canosa, we gotta do stuff, let's go, let's go, we gotta do this, so I cannot, it's our number one goal is to not let the hospitals be overwhelmed. That's the key. That's right. Yeah, the, part of my question was about the hospitalization, and as well, um, when you say recovered, yeah. um, does that mean that they're no longer positive or that they, they're they well again? Uh, a, com a combination thereof, they had, have exceeded their 10 day, once you're isolated, you've already had it for at least four days, if not five. So you go into 10 days of isolation, okay? Which is similar to quarantine. Quarantine is 14 days. Typically people under quarantine are not symptomatic. They don't even know they've got it, but they'll get it. The next four or five days are the trick. If they, if they take a turn for the, you know, for the worse, sniffles, headaches, fever. Um, so, well, it's a combination of well, home, we, we only have one Clinton County COVID patient right now at the hospital, so. That's something to knock on wood for. So. Out, of, out of all the college students, and that's been the bulk of the positives. Yes. Um, how yes. many of them were symptomatic? Um, I don't know that. I don't know that answer. I don't. A majority are not. It does not impact uh, from the colleges that I know, not just SUNY Blacksburg. Kids that age, that bad? No, no, no. The the at risk uh, with underlying health conditions, the older, you know, those are the ones we worry about. The we must protect the most. And do we have, do we have any of the new, do we have access to any of the new um, treatments that are been approved lately? Do, are those, would those come to us? At, yeah, there's plenty. Uh, yes, the hospital, Dr. Collins did talk about the, uh, some of the newer treatments that they're using at CVPA, quite successfully as I understand. So, yep. Anyone else? Just, have they had any people that have had it? and get exposed to it again? And then, did they get some kind of immunity? Do we know that yet? Uh, we don't know that yet, don't know that. No, 90 days is the window. At any time within those 90 days, you can come up with symptoms again, loss of taste, smell, things of that nature. But that 90 day window is I understand for my nurses. So. I, something I read someplace that the immunity time on the COVID is very short. Yes. Yeah, very it's not, it's not like the Yeah, I think that was out uh, June, July of this year. That's when it first came out. We were hoping that the immunity would be, you always hope for what you hope for, a lifetime, right? But uh, no, this one's gonna look like it's short. That's that's all we know, it's anecdotal information, so. Anyone else? John, anything to add? No, I can't <laughs> Thank you very much. It, it was a good, we've had a good week so far. I just wanna keep it that way. Much better than last week. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you, John. Thank you. Human Services, Legislator Conroy. Yes, the Human Services Committee has not met since the last regular session, and the next Human Services Committee meeting is scheduled for next Wednesday, November 4th at 4.15 p.m.
personnel, I'll do that. Uh, the personnel committee has not met since the last regular session. The committee was polled on resolution number 641, uh, which is on today's agenda. You'll see it there. And the next meeting is tentatively scheduled for Monday, November 2nd at 4 p.m. Airport, Mr. Hall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Glassburg International Airport Committee met earlier this afternoon. Resolution 642 through 649 have been placed on today's agenda as a result of the committee's recommendation. Uh, next Glassburg International Airport, Airport Committee meeting is tentatively scheduled for Tuesday, November 24th at 4 p.m. Uh, I will say this, our airport manager, uh, the airport committee already knows this, uh, just returned from the conference. Uh, it's not a lot to report. He's going to report at our next meeting, but uh, the consensus at the airport conference with all, a lot of airlines is they really believe, they believe, that once this border opens up, the business is going to come back. And they believe that that's a good sign. So just thought I'd let you know that uh, for now. And the report. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Public safety, legislative task. Uh, the public safety committee has not met since the last regular session. The committee was pulled on resolution 650 through 654 on today's agenda. The next public safety committee meeting is tentatively scheduled for Monday, November 2nd at 5 p.m. And the report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Transportation, legislator McGill. Transportation committee has not been met since the last regular session. The next transportation meeting. Mm -hmm. Is tentatively scheduled for Monday, November 9th at 5:15. End of the report. Thank you. Liaison, uh, Board of Health. We just heard from uh, Chamber of Commerce. Legislator Rose. I have from them. Clay Community College. Yeah, we had a uh, Board of Trustee meeting last night, and the, the message is uh, from that board. Thank you to this legislature for all of the support um, and uh, just the outgoing uh, the outgoingness that we that we provided them over the last several years. Okay. Um, the the uh, money's not lost on them, so they appreciate it. Uh, can you do workforce development? Let's get ahead. I have no, well, actually, the issue that we talked about last time about the funding of the opioid uh, displaced worker, it's a little wonky. Uh, bottom line is that position has been funded through the rest of the grant uh, cycle, which is December 31st, um, and New York State worked it out and we're still working with at least the finance office to get that money back into New York State coffers uh, where it was initially uh, intended to come from. So that's that's that. Thank you. Community Services Board, Legislator Conroy, no report. Cooperative extension, uh, it's no October meeting. Discipline review and grievance, we have nothing right now. Uh, Inner County, let's start roll. Um, yes, we met last Thursday in uh, Lewis County, hosted a meeting via Zoom, um, and really the, the presentation was the history of Tug Hill. Uh, LCLG, regional planning. Nothing for that. Soil and water. Yes, we did a hearing last week. Uh, they're winding down from all the summer projects. Um, and Pete uh, certainly wanted to thank you uh, for working with them to figure out the situation with the fire. Oh, thank you. On fire. <coughs> we were happy to do that. The legislature was happy to do that. Uh, got that. Okay. Staff reports. Ms. Keller? No report. And Mr. Zerl? Chairman, I've got nothing to report this evening. That leaves it to me. Um, this could be uh, Legislator McGill's last meeting, depending on uh, if we get clarity on the vote, that is soon to come up here in another six days. Um, so as I say, this could be uh, past last meeting here. Um, I want to thank you on behalf of the legislature for serving. I want to thank you for doing a great job. And personally, I want to thank you for taking the post and, and doing such a good job. Um, I also want to mention to everybody that uh, Judge McGill, uh, Legislator McGill, has uh, volunteered to uh, remain as chair of the Law Enforcement Review Committee um, until that work is done. Yeah, and again, just like the military. <laughs> <laughs> again, on behalf of the legislature, thank you, and personally, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you've done a great job. It was nice of you to step forward and volunteer. Uh, Mr. Hall, did you have something to ask? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> As you know, 
uh, I voted against you replacing it. That's Mr. Dane. Uh, it wasn't you, it was the situation. Uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to have you here. Uh, I think you've done a fantastic job. Uh, I've enjoyed your opinions. I've enjoyed your votes. Uh, and I personally would like to serve with you anytime you want to come back. So thank you very much, Pat. Thank you. Thank you for this. Anyone else before we move on? Okay. Then again, you may be here at the next one. We'll go through it all. Well, if the next person's term starts. Well, January as soon as no, this was a this was a well, that's right. This was a special election that is taking place right. at the same day as the general. Hey, I. So your your career could be as a county sure. it could be done oh. sure. <laughs> that's too bad. I can't. You know, so the I mean, uh, Mr. Hughes <laughs> and Mr. Fisher are not here this here. evening. Uh, but um, uh, you know. You know, we will we will certainly um what's the most certified that will correct yeah. however long that takes. Correct. That's right, it's different than the regular yeah. It's just it's a special election on uh, the same day. That's okay with me. I don't have to I don't have to go through the budget. <laughs> <laughs> All right, before voting on the resolutions, I want to note that the majority of the resolutions have been thoroughly discussed by the appropriate committees, and the legislature is taking action tonight based in large part on the recommendation of those committees. Mr. Zerlo, would you please read the titles of the resolutions to be acted upon? Certainly. Resolution 634, approving change in meeting date of regular session number 21, legislature. Motion, Mr. Perrier, second, Mr. Hall. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Resolution 635, authorizing the purchasing agents to solicit bids for elevator maintenance services, buildings, and ground. Motion, Mr. Perrier. Second, Mr. Conroy. Discussion. Yes, is this, uh, is it, it says buildings and grounds, but this, does this cover? Uh, the, the, the contract, sir, covers every department who has an elevator. Okay, thank you. And, um, and, and uh, those departments, you know, send, send the money to the building okay, and ground budget. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Resolution 636, authorizing the purchasing agents to solicit requests for qualifications for engineering services, buildings, and grounds. Motion, Mr. Perrier. Second, Mr. Timmons. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Resolution 637, rejecting bids for snow plowing and removal at the Plattsburgh International Airport purchasing. Motion, Mr. Timmons. Second, Mr. Hall. Discussion. Now, this was uh, obviously there's there's a, the book of business has changed out there, um, but a very positive working relationship between the airport and and, uh, and the highway department. Um, so our, our local team will be will be handling this, um, uh, you know, because it's, it, it is manageable operation. When we had when the, when the place was full of cars and more stuff had to be plowed. <laughs> Uh, we required the contract, but uh, uh, this by, by rejecting this, yeah, we are doing it in-house and saving money. Anything further? Roll call. Mr. Perrier. Yes. Mr. Hall. Yes. Okay. Resolution 638, awarding bids for snow plowing and removal for various county buildings, purchasing. Motion, Mr. Timmons. Second, Ms. Waldron. Discussion. Roll, roll call. Mr. Perrier? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Resolution 639, awarding bid for removal of trash and recyclables purchasing. Motion, uh, Mr. Timmons. Second, Mr. Potiker. Discussion? I'd just like to point out that the contract's um, uh, considerably less this year. And this is one of those um, things, I, I, uh, one of those silver linings, if you will. I think departments uh, realized um, that you know, they didn't need the service that, that was originally intended uh, during this whole mess um, uh, because we, we cut them down and it was sufficient. So we're going with the, number, you know, the reduced number of, of, of pickups uh, in 2021. Roll call. Mr. Yes. Mr. Hall. Yes. Carried. Resolution 640, approving application for refund town of Beekman Town. Motion, Mr. Timmons. Second, Mr. Rosenquist. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Perrier? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Carried. 
Resolution 641, approving backfill of permanent full-time social worker one position, mental health and addiction. Motion, Mr. Castine, and second, Mr. Hall. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Resolution 642, authorizing contract with Tracy Road Equipment Incorporated, Plattsburgh International. Motion, Mr. Hall. Second, Mr. Perrier. Discussion? Roll, roll call. Perrier? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Carried. Resolution number 643, amending resolution number 159, due February 26, 2020. Title Authorizing agreement with CNS Engineers for design and bidding services for the reconstruction of taxiway B. Pavement and General Aviation Apron Design Project, Plattsburgh International. Motion, Mr. Hall. Second, Mr. Potter. Discussion. Uh, for those of you who are not on uh, airport, uh, I just want to briefly say, and I'll, I'll, I won't say it three times, but this resolution and the next two um, uh, are amended in our favor because the CARES Act resulted in um, uh, taking care of the 5% local share. Um, so that's what these next three resolutions, this one and the next two resolutions do, is eliminate our 5% local share. Uh, there was also a resolution that this body passed um, a few meetings ago, awarding the bid for the construction of the runway out there, which was a considerable contract. So uh, that one plus uh, these, it looks as though we're around uh, the CARES Act um, um, reducing our county liability by about $700,000. Roll call. Mr. Perrier? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Perry. Resolution 644, amending resolution 160, dated February 26, 2020, titled Authorizing Agreement with CNS Engineers for Design and Bidding Services for the, uh, for the um, Acquisition of Aircraft, Rescue, and Firefighting Vehicle and Personal Protective Equipment, Plattsburgh International. Motion, Mr. Hall. Second, Mr. Timmons. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Carried. Resolution 645, amending resolution 158, dated February 26, 2020, title. Authorizing agreement with CNS engineers for the construction administration and observation services for the reconstruction of runway 1735, pavement and lighting, phases two and three, construction, reconstruction of runway 1735, pavement, phase four, construction projects, Plattsburgh International. Motion, Mr. Hall. Busy. Motion, Mr. Hall. Second, Ms. Walden. Discussion. Roll call. Perry? Yes. Mr. Hall. Yes. Resolution 646, authorizing contract amendment with Train U.S. Incorporated, Plattsburgh. <coughs> Motion, Mr. Hall. Second, Mr. Perry. Discussion. Roll call. Perry? Yes. Mr. Hall. Yes. Resolution 647, authorizing lease amendment with Beta Technologies, Plattsburgh International. Motion, Mr. Hall. Second, Mr. Perrier. Discussion. Uh, yes, Beta, uh, who, who you have approved a resolution previously for half of the <coughs> no stock, um, has exercised its, its right of first refusal and will be leasing the remainder uh, of that no stock, which is very, uh, very good news for us. I want to thank, I did in the committee, uh, the airport committee for you that were there, but for those that weren't, I wanted to thank uh, Legislator Hall for all the leadership he showed us um, and the airport committee. Uh, there was others involved as well, um, but uh, I want to thank Legislator Hall and the committee for the work they've done on this. This is really good news and it's been uh, a tough fight out there sometimes. And uh, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Roll call. Perry? Yeah. Mr. Hall? Yes. Carried. Resolution number 648, authorizing lease agreement with Adirondack Salt and Sand, LLC, Plattsburgh International. Motion, Mr. Hall. Second, Mr. Potiker. Discussion. Yeah, so Mr. Chairman, I'd like to abstain from the vote. Okay, we have to abstain from Mr. Perrier. Roll call. Mr. Timmons? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Fair. One abstention, Mr. Perrier. Resolution 649, authorizing lease agreement with Northern New York Driving Academy, Plattsburgh International. Motion, Mr. Hall. Second, Mr. Timmons. Discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to abstain from the vote. Very good. Mr. Potter abstains. Mm -hmm. uh, discussion? 
Roll call. Mr. Perrier? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Board of Extension? Mr. Potter. Resolution 650, the authorizing high visibility road check saturation patrols DRE call out during impaired driving crackdowns, ramp application and acceptance, stop DWI. Motion Mr. Cast on it. Second Mr. McGill. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Perrier? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Carried. Resolution 651, authorizing the purchasing agent to solicit bids for collision repair and auto body work. Sheriff's Department. Motion Mr. Cast on it. Second Mr. Potter. Discussion. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Resolution 652, authorizing contract with the GS Sciences Corporation. Sheriff's Department. Motion Mr. Cast on it. Second Mr. Timmons. Discussion. Roll call. Curry? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Carried. Resolution number 653, authorizing contract with Anita Bedrogi, uh, DO, Sheriff's Department. Motion Mr. Castine, second Mr. McGill. Discussion. Roll. Sorry, yes. I need to abstain from this uh, vote, please. Uh, 653, I need to abstain. Okay, so call the roll and Mr. Rosenquist will be listed as an abstention. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry, Chris. I misunderstood. Yeah, sorry. Um, Mr. Rosenquist abstains. Uh, roll call. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. One abstention. Mr. Rosenquist. Thanks, Chris. Resolution 654, authorizing lease with government of the United States of America, emergency services. Motion, Mr. Castine. Second, Mr. Hall. Discussion. Roll call. Perry? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Carried. Resolution 655, authorizing the county treasurer to increase revenue for website hosting services, information technology. Motion, Mr. Timmons, second, Mr. Brenquist. Rosenquist, I'm sorry. <laughs> Justice, Justice, Justice Brenquist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Legislator Rosenquist. Discussion. Uh, this, um, this project, just to remind everybody, this was in the 2019 shared services plan, at uh, least year two. Um, of the plan, so uh, this is um, <coughs> a positive step with the county working with the city last week. Roll call. Spray? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Carried. Resolution 656, approving reappointment to the Clinton Essex Franklin Library Board Legislature. 5-5, five, five, Mr. Hall, Mr. Perrier? Yes. Yeah. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. I, I have a motion to waive Rule 13.2. So I have a motion by Legislator Rosenquist, second by Legislator Hall. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. 13.2. Resolution 657, authorizing the county treasurer to increase appropriation and corresponding revenue for the Kent Falls Road Bridge Project Highway. Motion, Mr. Timmons, and second, Mr. McGill. Discussion. Roll call. Oh, Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Terry? See if you're on the toes. I know. I need all the help I can get. Does anyone else have anything further to come before the legislature? Me? Uh, yes. And I just want to thank everyone for the warm reception I've had uh, being here. Uh, I want to thank Mike as well because the door is always open to his office and his his knowledge of what goes on here is incredible. How he does it, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but I really appreciate it, and I, it's been a learning experience. A lot, whole lot has changed since I was kind of turning back a few years ago, uh, a couple years ago. But thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. With that, I have entertained a motion to adjourn. I move it. Legislator McGill. <laughs> Legislator Walter is the second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you all again. Thank you. Thank you again.